My name is Christine Hintz and I'm an environmental educator with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. Today we're standing at a stream in Annapolis, Maryland, and we would call this an urban stream. When we talk about stream health, we want to look at chemical quality of the stream, we want to look at the physical habitat of the stream, but we also want to look at the biological health of the stream. So how do we measure biological health? We measure it by sampling macroinvertebrates in the stream. Macroinvertebrates, or benthic macroinvertebrates, are creatures that live, they're organisms that live at the bottom of a stream, a pond or a river, and they're macro, which means that they are large enough to be seen with the naked eye, and they're invertebrates, which means they have no backbone. The important thing to remember is that these benthic macroinvertebrates are larval or nymph stages of adults that fly out of the stream. So for example, we're talking about dragonflies and damselflies and blackflies and craneflies. We're also talking about different forms of beetles and scuds, shrimp, clams and snails. All of these are benthic organisms which help us determine what the health of the stream is. So today at this stream, we're going to try to sample some benthic macroinvertebrates with what we call a D-net. It is D-shaped, as you can see. Our benthic macroinvertebrates like to live in different places in the stream, including riffles and pools and runs, but mostly under rocks and in a lot of organic material that is in the stream. For example, leaves, under root wads, in woody debris, so we can find them in many different places, even if we don't have riffles, which we do not have here. So Amy's going to help me demonstrate the D-net shuffle. All right, Amy, come on. Let's not try to fall over. <laughs> what we're trying to do here is we're trying to disturb the substrate of the stream. If there's rocks, we're trying to move the rocks around and we're also trying to get as much as we can into this net. You want to hold your net so that it's facing upstream and whatever is coming off the bottom is flowing into our net. Oh, we're really good. There's a huge rock in here. In this D-net there's a lot of um, sediment, but we have leaves and we know that benthic macroinvertebrates always have a job in the stream. We have shredders. So sometimes you'll wonder about all of the leaves that are in the stream and the different forms of decomposition. So what happens is that some benthic macroinvertebrates will shred the leaves. We have filter feeders. We also have collectors. We have predators. And we have ones that are grazers. And those we'll find on the rocks most of the time. On this rock, I see a lot of mud. You have to have really good eyes to find these guys. You look very, very carefully for any movement. And caddisflies, which build a case, will often stick to the underside of rocks. I don't see any caddisflies. So what we've done is we've taken our D-net into a bucket of water and we'll look really closely into this bucket for anything that might be moving. And use a little dip net sort of a smaller version of the D-net. And now you can see, again, if there's anything moving. Here we are at our field table, it's my little laboratory. I've got some tools here. I've got a pipette that I use to suck up the macroinvertebrates and a little pincher if I have to remove them from the D-net or the bucket. What I've got is a damselfly, which is moderately sensitive. Also got in this bucket, a really feisty grass shrimp. Use a large magnifying glass to help identify your organism. What we like to do is we like to look at a dichotomous key to help us identify the macroinvertebrates. Features of macroinvertebrates or important anatomy parts help us identify which macroinvertebrate we're looking at. We can identify them by the number of their tails. For example, 
Mayflies have three tails for the most part. We can always remember that by May having three letters. Stoneflies have two tails. We also can identify them by the size of their eyes. The big compound eyes on damselflies and dragonflies indicate that they are predators. We can identify them by um, whether they have a shell or not. For example, we have different kinds of snails. Our worms are very easy to identify, but different kinds of worms we have to look at. When we do our biological assessments, we usually use a rating sheet. It's developed by Maryland Biological Stream Survey and Maryland Stream Waders. We rate our stream by not necessarily the number of macroinvertebrates that you're finding, but by the diversity of the macroinvertebrates. We have the sensitive organisms, we have the less sensitive organisms, the somewhat tolerant and the tolerant. We will count the number of the different organisms that we found, multiply it by either three, two, one, or zero, and come to a number which will tell us if our stream is good, fair, marginal, or poor. The last thing we want to talk about is how to put our macroinvertebrates back where they belong. We took them out of their homes, so we want to put them pretty much where we found them. If we pick up a rock, for example, we want to put that rock back in the stream gently and where we found it. Hopefully they're going to find their way home. <laughs>